Here's another example of the Galois correspondence. Here, we consider what happens when we work over a finite field. Problem, find the splitting field of f of x equal to x to the eighth minus one over z mod five, and we want to find its Galois group. Now, here we're just looking for the eighth roots of unity over z mod five. So let's first consider what happens when we work over the rationals. If I factor x to the eighth minus one, okay, well, we can either repeatedly use difference of two squares, or we just note this factors into cyclotomic polynomials as follows. So we have x to the four plus one, x squared plus one, x plus one, and x minus one as factorization into irreducible factors. Now, if I want the splitting field, okay, we're just gonna add in all roots of these polynomials. So I put in plus or minus i, and using de Moivre's theorem, okay, if we solve x to the four equal to minus one, we're just gonna have the points in the unit circle at the proper multiples of pi over four. That means, okay, for the splitting field of this polynomial, we're just looking at, okay, we take the rationals and adjoin e to the pi i over four. And then that's the same as taking the rationals and adjoining square root of two and i. Now, the degree of our splitting field over the rationals is equal to four. That means the order of the Galois group is equal to four, and we note it's isomorphic to a Z2 cross a Z2. See this, we note we have generators given by, okay, I could take phi one, this is gonna send square root of two to minus square root of two, leaves I alone. Then for phi two, we could just use complex conjugation. Now, for the Galois correspondence, okay, in Z2 cross Z2, we'd have three subgroups of order two, and then this is how we line up the corresponding subfields. Okay, so here's our Galois correspondence in this case. Let's see what happens when we move over to Z mod five. We could start with our factorization from before as a first step, but the irreducibles may now factor over Z mod five. In fact, okay, first by Fermat's little theorem, okay, we'll have that for X and Z mod five, that x to the fifth power is always equal to x. So if x is non-zero, then x to the four is equal to one, or each non-zero x is a root of x to the four minus one. So this is gonna factor into linear factors over z mod five. This also says that z mod five comes with the square roots of minus one already in z mod five. Okay, so we have two squared equals three squared, it's so four, which is minus one. Now that gives a hint for how x to the four plus one should factor. Okay, well note, since we're looking for eighth roots of unity, I also want the square roots of the square roots of minus one. So I'll also want solutions to x squared equals two and x squared equals three. Now, if we check x to the four plus one factors into irreducible quadratics as x squared plus two times x squared plus three. So, that's gonna confirm what we're trying to do here. Straightforward check that these are both irreducible over z mod five. And that's gonna be our full factorization of x to the eighth minus one. Now, for the splitting field, okay, as a first step, let's take z mod five adjoint x, mod it out by the ideal x squared plus two. So, what we're doing here, I'm gonna take all elements of the form a plus b omega, where a and b are in z mod five, and I have that omega squared is equal to minus two, or in z mod five, that's equal to three. We note, if I take two omega, that'll be a root of x squared plus three. So if I take two omega squared plus three, I get four omega squared plus three, omega squared is a three, we get a 15 and that goes to zero. So that means, okay, over our splitting field, okay, first step, we'll also have that this irreducible factor also splits. So that means we in fact have the splitting field for our polynomial as follows. Now, that gives our full factorization. We see that the eighth roots over Z mod five are gonna be one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four each times omega. So that means we have a separable extension and it makes sense to talk about the Galois group of this polynomial. Now, 
we have our splitting field. We see that degree of our splitting field over Z mod five is equal to two. So that's the order of our Galois group. And here we know, okay, what does a Galois group do? Well, it's gonna interchange the roots of a polynomial that we mod out by. So that means it's gonna have to switch omega and four omega for this irreducible factor. So all we're doing here, we're just gonna send omega to minus omega. And that's definitely of order two. Now, no Galois correspondence here. Okay, there's no intermediate fields. And we know, okay, recall in a finite field, okay, here I have a finite field of 25 elements. That means the non-zero elements are gonna form a cyclic group of order 24. And I'll leave it you to verify that this cyclic group is generated by the element one plus omega. 